started this when he graduated from college. He got down here and he says, yeah, I'll do this for one year. <laughs> well, 44 years later, we're still doing it. And uh, uh, when I came down to be with him uh, 10 years ago, we were serving about 400 families a month with food. Uh, we give away free food, free clothes, um, help a lot of people with uh, IDs to get work. Um, we help with some water bills, some power bills, um, have people uh, get jobs. Uh, we, we just, the, the list is pretty much endless, okay, um, of what we help people with, diapers, adult and, and uh, child, baby diapers and formula, and it just keeps going on. So if, if there's a need, send them to us, okay? I don't care what the need is. We had a lady call up and said, my roof just caved in, what do I do? Uh, we don't help with that, but let me refer you to this place and this place and this place and this place, okay, kind of thing. So, last month we served 2,000 families with food. That's a lot of food. That's a lot of food. That's a lot of families. That's a lot of families. Um, and um, I had a gentleman come in and, and give us a thousand dollar check last week. We have a lot of, we, we work strictly through donations. And he said, well this is not very much, but here, you know, here's a thousand dollars. And I said, no, this is great. Let me tell you how good this is. Let me tell you how great this is. We buy food through Central Illinois Food Bank at 19 cents a pound. So when I get a pallet of meat, that's roughly a thousand pounds. It's a hundred and ninety dollars. So that thousand dollars just bought two and a half tons of meat. And he went, this is great. This is great. Okay, so uh, and when, when people come in, they sign up with us and then they go through a, a food, the food line and they can choose the food they want. So they can say, I already have enough jars of peanut butter, I don't need that. Oh, fresh onions, fresh carrots, oh yeah, that, this is great. And so we'll buy food from Holtings. We'll buy food from Henkel's with the meats. We'll buy food from the Central Land Food Bank. We have lots and lots of people who take up a food drive and just bring it in. We're getting ready to do over 400 Thanksgiving boxes, either with hams or turkeys. And we sign the people up, um, especially new families with children, and we give them a card, they come in on the 25th and 26th, pick up their Thanksgiving box, and off they go. That has nothing to do with the 2,000 families that we're already going to be serving. So that's another 400. We'll probably do a 500 Christmas boxes, all with gifts, all with, all with toys for the kids. So I've got to sit down with each individual family and say, who are you, where do you live, what's your phone number, what are your kids, what ages are they, what sizes do they wear, uh, what do you need and what do you want? It's amazing. Okay, I've been doing. I've been sitting down with lots and lots and lots of families. And one of the things I've learned over the last ten years that I've been there is, I want to give them a Christmas gift that's not really a Christmas gift. You would never get this probably in your house or my house. But I want people when they adopt a, a family and give them a gift. I, the gift that's most precious to the people is a laundry basket full of cleaning supplies. Mm -hmm. Toilet paper, paper towels, dish soap, laundry detergent. Oh, they go, I want that. <laughs> I want that. That's what I want. Okay? And it's amazing because when I do sit down with family and it's a single mom with three kids, and I'll say, what do you need and what do you want? She goes, I don't want anything. I just want my kids to have a good Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really neat. Mm -hmm. And when they're going from paycheck to paycheck to paycheck, and they might only make $300 a month. Wow. And they go, I don't want anything. I just want my kids to have something. And we go, yeah, that's good. Okay. It's amazing how many people we do serve, and then they come back and they say, Dave, I just got my first job. I want to make sure I give you the first $20. We serve a lot of homeless people. There's probably 200 homeless people here in Decatur, living in the woods, living under bridges, living in cars. And so they'll come in and, and uh, they'll say, Dave, do you have any MREs? And those of you that were in the service know exactly what, what an MRE is. Meals ready to eat. It's all one big package. They've, they've got the entree, they've got the crackers, they've got the peanut butter, they've got the cheese, they've got the, 
the drink, everything is right in there. So they'll take the entree, okay, and they'll put it in this plastic bag with a little bit of water, and it heats up to 250 degrees in about 15, 20 seconds. They've got a hot meal. Then they take that hot package, okay, because that keeps warm for six hours, and they'll put it inside their sleeping bag, keep warm. We hand out candles and matches to the, a lot of the homeless guys, okay. Long underwear, oh my goodness, can't get enough of that during the winter. Hats and gloves, we pass those out by the thousands in the winter for, for kids coming in, okay. Um, all kinds of things for the homeless people, okay. Uh, but that's just a joy to be down there. Um, all the time serving, all the time helping, um, meeting those needs. Do we have people taking advantage? Absolutely. I don't ask them. I, you know, nowhere in Scripture does it say, help those people in need, but make sure that you're only helping the ones that... Okay. No, no, no. It just says, help them. I'll take care of the rest. Right? God says, I'll take care of the rest. You just go and help. He never says, make sure you take... Make sure, make sure you, uh, you, know, you, you have an application. and Make sure that, they, that they're doing the right thing. No, 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 no. He just says, go help. But we still have people taking advantage, and that's okay. That's okay. We try our best to make sure that we're helping those people. And if we know that they're taking advantage, I'll sit down with them and say, we got to stop this. Um, we have a free clothing room, and we probably have 350 people coming in on a, on a weekly basis to get free clothes. Single moms, they don't have the $30 to go to the laundromat and wash. Plus, they can't carry all the dirty clothes and three kids and walk six, seven, eight blocks, ten blocks, fifteen blocks to go to the laundromat. So they'll come in and get clothes every week. They'll take the old clothes, throw them away. If that's, you know, whatever that, that's just the way they live. And that's okay, because they've got clean clothes. I can't imagine what life would be like if I had to, if I had to put all my dirty clothes into a, a big bag and go down the street, make sure I had change to go wash every time I wanted to wash. Um, water. We have probably 50, 60 families that are living in homes without water. Their water got turned off. They can't afford the monthly bill. What would life be like if you didn't have water? Well, you had to, you had to have six or seven gallon jugs of plastic jugs that you had to go next door and say, can I, can I have some water so I could flush my toilet? There's probably another 50 or 60 people living in homes without power. I get 20, 30 phone calls a day. Do you guys help with rent? Do you guys help with power? Do you guys help with, you know, this and this and this and this. Pretty amazing. Here in Decatur. Decatur has the highest unemployment rate in the state. We're still double digits. Okay? But that really doesn't tell the story. We're probably closer to 20, between 20 and 25 percent unemployed or underemployed. The unemployment rate only tells you the numbers of people that are getting un unemployment checks. It doesn't tell you the people that were getting unemployment checks and that ran out. They don't qualify, they're not part of that, that percentage. You don't, you don't hear the people that were getting $20, $30 an hour at CAD, at Tate and Lyle, at PPG, and they got laid off. And now they're making $8 an hour. That's pretty tough when you've got a family of five and you're making eight dollars an hour. Uh, the, the, what we call the SNAP program used to be called the LINK program, used to be called food stamp program, okay? Everybody just got reduced in their, in their LINK cards. Now, and I understand that if you're, if you're a, a family of four, you were getting approximately $650 a month 
in Link. It just went down $36. Okay. Can people live on $600 a month food stamps for a family of four? It's possible. But when you were getting this much, and now it's this much, so what do you do? Well, we've got a program in the state of Illinois, in Decatur, that is not for low income. It's for anybody who wants to get more food for less money. My wife and I do this. This is an awesome program. It's a food co-op. It's a food co-op. It's, it's wonderful. My wife and I pay $39. We get $90 worth of food at the end of the month, each month. And I know what we're getting because I go, watch, I go see the menu. It's for anybody who wants to do this. What a great program. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, now your link just went down. How about if I, how about if I tell you how to spend $39 and get $90 worth of food? And they go, where do I do this? <laughs> it's great. It's a great program. So, yeah, we, we do have a, a negative, but I got a great positive. <clears throat> so people can sign up and get that, that, that food. There's also part of that food co-op program. It's called Smart Choice Foods. You can look that up on the Internet and go buy yourself. Anybody can do this. And what's, what I'm really promoting in churches is to say, how many people in your church need food? How about the churches buy one, two, three, five of these every month? Take them to a family that needs food and say, I don't need to come in. I, didn't, I came unannounced. Just wanted to give you a box of food and say we miss you. We love you. God loves you. Here you go. Would you remember that the rest of your life? Absolutely. Absolutely. What a ministry. Okay. Sharing some different things. Okay. So we, we Northeast Community Fund is very, very, very active. And we help lots and lots and lots of people, lots of families. Great clients. Do we have the funsters? Yes. Okay. Um, we have people that come in and they're alcoholics and they're, they're, they're drinking. And we say, no, can't serve you until you're sober. We have people on drugs. Can't serve you until you're clean. Okay. We have people that come in and uh, they're, they're a little bit rowdy. Oh, we need to leave. Okay. But that's just sporadic. 99% of the people are coming in going, Dave, I really don't want to be here, but I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad we can serve you. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. I spent some time, I spent 20 years as, a, as an elementary school principal before I came to Decatur. And uh, I love that a lot, okay? I love the kids. I love the kids and we did it. We, you know, but uh, after 20 years I said, you know, what, what do I want to do? I have uh, several degrees, but I have one of my degrees is in marketing and developing. And so I spent some time... Um, teaching and, and preparing schools for how do we get more money, especially in the Lutheran system, the private schools, how do we get more money to, to do a quality job to make sure that we're doing the right thing without having to tap in and, excuse me, and reach out to families and say, dig deeper. Well, that's, that's not really a good thing. How do we dig deeper? Well, we're all, some of us are doing as much as we can, okay? So where, where's the second source funding? Where's the third source funding? Where's the fifth source funding? There are five million foundations out there doing some great things. A lot of them don't even get asked. Okay? A lot of them never get asked. You know, so they, they give their money to United Way, Planned Parenthood, or wherever. Okay? I want to tap into those, and that's what—that's the kind of thing that I'm doing at Northeast Community Fund, because I—we will not ask, we will not send out a solicitation letter. How many of you get solicitation letters and you go, "Yeah, psh, I'm not even going to open that one up," okay? Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is is send, send one solicit, send one check for five dollars to one place, and then you get twenty more, right. <laughs> twenty more, and you say, "What did I do that for?" Okay. We, I, I really support Open Door Ministry, Voice of the Martyrs. Oh, great, great, great organizations. 
love those. I love that stuff when it comes in because I'm sharing all kinds of things with, with our adult Bible class at, at church. Nobody, 99.9% .9 of the people are clueless about the persecution going on in the world today. We are so blessed here in America. We have no clue what persecution is like. We have no clue what hunger is like. We have no clue, you know, for the most part. The people I work with do have a clue about no water, homeless, no power, every night, you know. And we're passing out candles for so kids can do their homework by candlelight. Okay, here in Decatur, yeah, here in Decatur. But that's okay, and you know. If you were like me, we grew up poor, but we didn't know we were poor. We didn't. We, I, I had two pairs of jeans and a, and, a, and a pair of pants for church, and that was it. That's okay. I didn't know we were supposed to have more than two pairs. I didn't know we were supposed to have two pairs of shoes one Sunday. Well, if I if I wore my Sunday shoes on Monday or Tuesday, well, I'd be in trouble. Okay. Okay. So we just thought that was normal. Because everybody else was in the same boat. Right. Our telephone? Get off the phone! Get off the phone! Okay, kind of thing. And we all ran to the phone when the phone rang. Now we look at the phone and go, oh, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> okay, life is totally different today than it was 50, 60 years ago. The thing is, our God hasn't changed. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Our God hasn't changed. Um, so it, it's pretty neat. When, when uh, Roger called me last night and he said, uh, would you do this? The first thing that came to my mind when I said yes was, was a devotional. And this won't take very long, but, I, but it's a devotional that, that I, I've shared with several different places. Okay, Because of what I do, We're all the time saying, oh, that $1,000, oh, that $500, oh, that $50, oh, that $20, that $5, wow. Because now we can buy more food for more people, and that's, that's pretty neat. But I want to share something with you, okay, as, as a message that kind of goes along with all of that, okay? And, and I'm, I'm going to start out by saying... I quit tithing, and I want you to also. Do I have your attention? <laughs> I think I do. I quit tithing. Most people don't understand it anyway. 18% of the people in this, in this country who go to church regularly give to the church regularly. 18%. We don't understand tithing. So I quit tithing. I quit. Okay? Giving is supposed to be part of worship, but most people don't understand worship either. <laughs> okay? So, uh, let me tell you what I used to do. I used to take my check, and I say, okay, this is what I made. So my, my check to the church was $111.41. Here you go, Lord. It was down to the penny. It was it was ten percent. Here's here's my one hundred and eleven dollars and forty one cents, and I wrote that the same time I wrote my check to the power bill, for my power bill. Same time I wrote my check for the water bill. Same time I wrote my mortgage, and it was it was all part of my bills. How stupid! I quit time. It's an Old Testament law. But is it still part of the New Testament? Hmm, that's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. Should I tithe off my net or my gross? Should I tithe off my investments, which I don't have very much of? I tithe, I, I tithe my time. Is, is that okay? Hmm. See, the, the same question keeps coming up. Do I only do tithe? Do I only do my tenth? See, the, the word tithe is, is a derivative of tenth. 
So when I say I, I do a 5% tithe, uh, that's an oxymoron. Because that, that says I, I, I'm doing a 5%, 10%. That doesn't make sense. Oh, it, what, Lord, if, if, I, if I don't have the money and my bills are this much and my, in, and my income is... Are you going to be upset with me, Lord, if I, if I pay all my bills and I just don't have enough? And there's a lot of people out there doing that. What's the average amount of money that, the Amer uh, that each American household owes on their credit card? Oh my goodness. Right now it's between eight and $12,000 that every American household owes on their credit card. Wow. I know. And there's a lot of people that don't owe anything. And there's a lot of people that own 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000. And they say, well, if, if I owe 60,000, I think it'd be best, I think it'd be in my best interest to go get another credit card and, and maybe I can transfer this over to this zero. Even though that's going to be 20%, you know where I'm going, okay? Yeah. And they go, and then they find themselves owing 24, 25, 30, 40, 50,000. And they go, well, I'll just declare bankruptcy. Mm. Wow. Okay. When I wrote my check for $111.41, I didn't get it. I didn't get tithing. That's not, my, that's not tithing. That's not tithing at all. Okay. Let me, let me throw this phrase out. God doesn't want your money. He doesn't need your money. He can take that money away in a heartbeat. How many people invested, 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 and they were up here, and all of a sudden the market crashed, and then they were down here? He can take it away in a heartbeat. It's his money anyway. It's his money anyway. Okay? Everything belongs to God. Everything. Doesn't it? Yeah. It's his. I'm just a caretaker. I'm just a caretaker. So, after I started looking at, at certain things, and I, I started looking at different scripture passages, and the one that we all know, and we, we recite it off the top of our off, off our lips, off the top of our head, and we don't even think about it anymore, was for God. Think about these phrases. Think about each each. Grab, you know, put your arms around this particular Bible passage. For God so loved. Have you ever wondered why the, the word so is in there? For God so loved. Why didn't you say for God loved? Or God loved. For God so loved. Who? The world. Every single person on the, whoever walked the face of the earth, and those people that never walked the face of the earth, all those babies that never walked the face of the earth, he loved them. Now, you think about the word love. How much? I can't even grasp that concept. I can't grasp that concept that he loved so much that he gave. If God said to me, Dave, I want you to take your son and sacrifice him out on... Uh, uh, wait, 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 Lord, what's plan B? Okay? <laughs> because I, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can do that. Because i got two boys and, and a girl. And take your firstborn, take him up there, sacrifice him to me. Wow. He loved him. He loved us so much that he gave. When I, when I start to start to grasp that whole concept, I started changing my whole focus. My whole focus. Okay. I still give to the church. Don't get me wrong. I still give to the church, but I changed my question. I changed my question. I don't say how much should I give. My question now is, how much should I keep? If 
I don't ask how much should I give. I look at I look at what I have and Lord, how much should I keep? I'm no different than anybody in here. I still struggle with, oh, I've got this bill, I've got that bill, I've got this bill, I've got that bill. Oh man, but this power bill is pretty high this this month, okay? I still have all those gas went down. And that's great. Okay? That's awesome. But what was I doing when I had to make that special three trips to St. Louis and I didn't expect that, you know, and every time you go down there it's another sixty, seventy dollars in gas to go down and come back and well, I didn't expect that $200 extra bill coming in this I, we, I, I still, you know, I still have that. But I'm different. And, and I still say, I don't, I'm not asking how much I should give. How much should I keep? Hmm. What's that Bible passage? My God shall supply all my needs according to the bank. <laughs> no, no, no. According to his riches in Christ Jesus. And then what does he call me? He calls me his son. He calls me an heir to the throne. Whoa! Whoa. I'm, I'm his son. And he says, I'm going to supply your needs according to my riches. And in Psalms, what does it say? He owns what? Cattle. Cattle on a thousand, thousand hills. And the wealth in all the mines. Buffett, he doesn't come close. Gates, get out of the way. We got somebody richer than you. That's my dad. And Paul, and Paul says, you, you have the right to call him Abba, Father. And, and back then, when, when you said, when you looked at, at God the Father and called him Dad, that was unheard of. Because you gave a tremendous amount of respect. In fact, in the Jewish religion now, when, the, when they say the word God, they don't even say it. They just take that, this little pointer and they, they point it in the scripture because they don't, they don't want to use the word, they don't want to say the word God without giving it full respect. So they, they say, I can't give it full respect if I just say it. So I'm going to just point to it when I read out of the Torah. But we have the right to call him Dad. Wow. Wow. Do we still need to be obedient? Yes, absolutely. No doubt about it. Okay? God bless you. Hey, Bernie. God bless you. Have a safe trip. I, I share the name. Okay. God bless <laughs> But I guess, you know, when, when you called me yesterday, I said, yeah, I want to share some, some things about Northeast Community Fund. But I also want to share... This is what came to mind. And so, not how much do I give, but how much do I keep? Because it's not mine anyway. <laughs> it's not mine anyway. It's his. It's his. It's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so very much for this day. We thank you for the, the abundance, the abundance that you give us. You, you are blessing us beyond our wildest dreams. And we know that when we do bless, when we do give, you will bless us and bless us and bless us and bless us. Let us be great ambassadors of you. As we think, as we speak, as we go about each individual duty we have today and this week. Thank you, Father, for being our awesome God. We praise you and we thank you in your precious name. Amen.